It's so hot. And really, could it get any hotter for the original trilogy Star Wars action figures from Hot Toys within the secondary market? And how about Vaughn and Jesse, those clones from last week? Can Hot Toys get any hotter? And is it possible that within this episode, we're going to hear from the Hot Toys wizard? You have to wonder. Let's dive into it, baby. Right Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Market Value Chart Show right here at Six Scale Cantina. So, I've got the wizard juice. Is it going to enhance my Dark Jedi powers to be able to put some things together? Perhaps make some bold predictions? Mm, I can tell you right now, there are some real intriguing trends within the secondary market, not just with figures going up, but with figures going down, baby. And we're going to dive into some really, really cool stuff within this episode. Before we go ahead and do that, I will tell you that I will be live this coming Saturday with, guess what? Aries is live and raw. That's right. This coming Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern, you don't want to miss live and raw. It's been a while since we had live and raw. Make sure you book it on your calendars live again on Saturday, 6 p.m. Eastern. I kind of like this Saturday gig, baby. Book it on your calendars. I look forward to hanging out with all of you there for sure. And I'm also going to be live this coming Friday on Unfiltered with Dante's show at 8.30 p.m. EST. You don't want to miss that as well. Mm -mm -mm. So, without further ado, let's do what we normally always do. Not all the time, but most of the time. And go to Six Scale Cantina with every edition of the Market Chart Show to start off there anyway. And see what's shaking, baby. And pulling this up on the screen, if you do not have Six Scale Cantina bookmarked, you may want to consider doing so. It not only tells you when I'm going to go live, whether it's live and raw, or with the Aries Tarrington show, or with the Market Show Live. So it tells you everything about the channel, but it gives you all the secondary market trends, whether they're going up or down or steady, for all Star Wars Hot Toys, as well as the values within the secondary market. And all the primary market, all the Star Wars Hot Toys news. So when you scroll down on this, you can see right here <clears throat> that you get all the shows. And as you scroll down, you get breaking news, which the latest news was this Clode Trooper Jesse and Captain Vaughn. Wow. That came out of left field, didn't it? Man. Going to talk a little bit about that in a little bit. But let's look at the recent biggest movers. And looky here. Look at that Ben Kenobi from A New Hope. R2-D2. Grand Moff Tarkin dominated this biggest mover section. With original trilogy figures. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And then you can look below it. Very interesting with Luke Jedi Master trending down. We're going to get into that. Kylo Ren trending down. Look at these figures right here. We're going to dive into it. Let's go ahead and start off with Ben Kenobi from A New Hope. And pulling up some recent data onto the screen. You can see right here. And this is really just going back <clears throat> to the very end of October, on Halloween actually. 600 
and $17.99. And quite frankly, every single time that I am looking to see how this figure is moving, it is always in the mid to high 500s or well into the $600 tier range. And you can see right here with this portrait, this is absolutely one of the very best head sculpts that Hot Toys has ever done for Star Wars. I mean, this likeness of Alec Guinness is simply unbelievable. I mean, that is just amazing. And you have to wonder, is it possible that this particular figure could be a candidate for a reissue or some type of variant? And we're going to dive into that a little bit within this episode. But first, I want to actually go to the market value chart at sixscalecantina.com. And <clears throat> I'm going to pull that up onto the screen. And remember, whenever you go <clears throat> to the market value chart, you want to go ahead and click on that current value column arrow, which is in right up to the right a couple of times. Because when you do, you can get the highest ranked figures to the lowest ranked figures. So that's easier to navigate. You could also use this little search box, which I do sometimes. But I'm actually just going to sort it out highest to lowest. And you can see right here where Obi-Wan A New Hope is ranking. MMS 283. Now $598. I am highlighting it on the screen. Just $2 away from the $600 tier range. Wow. And do I think that this figure is going to breach the $600 tier range? I really, really do. And just like the Empire Strikes Back, Darth Vader, and just like the Deluxe Empire Strikes Back, Boba Fett, and much like the Attack of the Clones, Yoda, I actually really do think that this figure is actually a candidate for a straight reissue. And <clears throat> one of the reasons why is because I believe that with the Obi-Wan series forthcoming, there's going to be some even extra buzz for this particular character within Star Wars because of that forthcoming series. And when you combine that buzz with the buzz of the secondary market with this figure nearing just two dollars away from the six hundred dollar tier range it's certainly a candidate for a reissue do, do I, I really don't foresee really anything necessarily alec guinness wise within this obi-wan series and that type of thing so I, I don't think that this figure would interfere with anything that they're going to do with obi-wan and really i pointed out countless times how how many of this, how many figures like Marvel has and some of these other lines. So I, there could certainly be multiple Ben Kenobi's, Obi-Wan's up for pre-order. One of the most beloved and iconic characters in the history of Star Wars, for sure. So certainly I could see them doing this. I actually think uh, I give it a 50-50 chance that, that it could happen with this. But really, when you go ahead and look at these trends, my goodness... That is huge. <clears throat> and the other one while we're here, I want to go ahead and point out, and I'm just going to type in Luke <clears throat> and show you something different in here because we're going to go right to a figure that's trending down very interestingly while another version is trending up. And this Luke Jedi Master, Return of the Jedi, MMS 429, the figure that comes with what a lot of collectors call the fat suit, is actually trending down to $359 and trending down. And really, <clears throat> going into that in particular version of Luke, you know, you can get Luke 
Also, the Endor version, which is not trending down, is actually trending up. Both of those versions, and especially the deluxe version, while this one is starting to show signs of suffering and bringing up the biggest mover section. You can see right here, we're going to get into R2 and Tarkin, but just go into the loop right there, right next to Kylo, who's also trending down. It's trending down. And I've been keeping an eye on this for a long time. Let's go ahead and take a look at some Luke, some Luke's. I'm pulling this up onto the screen. <clears throat> and you can see back here, and this is actually back from October 3rd. i give you a little bit of a timeline here. With 11 bids, $350. Not including the $35 in shipping. Not including taxes. Let's go to another one. <clears throat> and a very good seller, by the way. We're 100% feedback. Not a whole lot, but 100% and over 30. Good look right here. <clears throat> seller, 100% feedback. Back from September 29th. 14 bits. $341. But not including the $8.10 in shipping. Cheap, cheap shipping. Let's continue to go on. And here's another Luke Jedi Master. Again, we're talking about MMS 429. This is going back to October 24th. $330 with 12 bits. Not including the $24.35 in shipping. Not including taxes. You take some wizard juice, baby. Mm. Let's go to another one. <clears throat> I'm bringing this up on the screen. And this one's going back just to November 3rd. $305. This in particular seller, outstanding seller, over a thousand feedback, 1,066, 100% positive. Brand new. $305 with only two bids, not including the $25 in shipping, not including taxes. So what you're seeing here, with this particular Luke Skywalker, this particular version anyway, is you're seeing a gradual downtrend with this particular figure. While the, <clears throat> the Luke Endor version continues to, to do very well, and especially the Luke Endor Deluxe is, is off this planet, even before Luke ever showed up uh, in The Mandalorian Season 2. That figure was already, you know, fetching a very hefty price, 400, about 435 average within the secondary market. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, that, that particular figure is just seems to be the one right now um, that is taking precedence over this. Now, the thing I do want to point out about this is that when you get this particular version, you actually get the, uh, the cloak. Whereas the Endor versions, you don't get it. But for whatever reason, that's not the deciding factor with choosing between the Endor or this one. The Luke Endor is doing very, very well. And the one people are gravitating towards within the secondary market. Now, <clears throat> is this going to continue this way with this figure is the question. I actually don't think so. Um, I think it's actually going to, to catch up to the um, Luke Endor Deluxe. Not all the way, but it's going to be close up in there. I just think right now, if you have to choose between one or the other, you're going to go ahead and you're going to choose that Luke right now is, what, is what's being chosen. Um, it's very interesting. We're going to have to keep an eye on it. But that is actually an OT figure. And that is trending down. Let's go back to the Six Scale Cantina and to the Biggest Mover section and see what else is going on. And take a look at that. R2-D2 from the original trilogy. And Grand Moff Tarkin. Wow. So pulling up Tarkin. And this figure, not even with a two-pack. 
$689 with an outstanding seller of 100% feedback, $636, not including the $20 in shipping, not including taxes. And even if you wanted to go all the way and put 10% off on this with a best offer, sure. Okay, 620, you want to do more, 600. Wow, this figure just continually sells in the 500s and $600 range. And that's not including the Darth Vader. But I will tell you that that two pack is showing big signs of trending up even more to get that Darth Vader with it. Very, very interesting, which is different and more accurate to the film than the original Darth Vader that comes by itself. So that two-pack is hot, baby. But Grand Moff Tarkin is extremely hot. We're gonna look at that in just a minute. But let me show you some things here with R2-D2. And pulling this up on the screen. And you can look back just from September 18th. Going back a little bit, $425 with eight bids. And really, that's with a seller that hardly doesn't have any feedback. Not including the $13 in, in shipping. So imagine if it had more feedback. Well, let's go to some more here. <clears throat> I'm pulling this up onto the screen. Here's our 2 d 2 just back from October 3rd. And $459.02 U.S., not including the $29.65 in shipping, not including taxes. Wow. And then pulling this one up on the screen, and that was a very reputable seller, and another very reputable seller, Hawk Wars Toys. The close to $1,200 feedback now. $500 this one went for, not including the $23.11 in shipping, not including taxes. And so where exactly are these lying within the market value chart at sixscalecantina.com? And again, I'm going to go ahead and sort it out best selling wise so it's easy to navigate. These are pretty high up, so it's not going to be too difficult to find. I'm going to click that arrow within the current value column a couple times. <clears throat> and just scrolling down over here, you can see Grand Moff Tarkin, which is right behind the Obi-Wan A New Hope I just showed you. MMS 433. Now $585 and rising. And you have to wonder, is it possible? that this Grand Moff Tarkin can actually breach the $600 tier range? And I say, yes, I think it can. Wow. And then, <clears throat> let's go to R2-D2 and see if I can find him on here. And take a look at this, R2-D2 from A New Hope, MMS 511, now $452 and rising. And I highlighted it and bring it to the middle of the screen. Wow. Mm. It's going to be very interesting to see what would make sense with the way that this is trending within the secondary market for hot toys to do. And... <clears throat> One of the things that I personally think that is a possibility that could happen is actually a simultaneous release of a two-pack between C-3PO and R2-D2. As a matter of fact, it's very interesting to me that this hasn't happened already. I mean, to me... Uh, story-wise, I mean, this would be the two-pack of two-packs when it comes to Star Wars. Uh, and with R2-D2 trending up so high, they obviously didn't provide it with the, uh, with Luke, which is very, very interesting. Um, well, certainly if you come out with a two-pack 
for C-3PO and R2-D2, you could take that R2-D2 and you could go ahead and you could pose it with your Luke. I mean, it's R2-D2, to be quite honest with you. And um, this would just be, uh, what a great way to release C-3PO. I don't have R2 within my collection. I don't have C-3PO because they don't have a Hot toy C-3PO. They came out with a two-pack baby. And it would, it would come with a display base, hopefully, you, you know, unlike the R2s that they already come with don't have a, you know, a, a, a display base, which is quite honestly weird to me. Um, uh, you know, I, I mean, this would be a hot set. Um, and I would pay handsomely for it. For sure. And you don't need all the stuff that this deluxe version came with. That really, you could just get a really cool R two D two with maybe some stuff. Really, just want the C three PO. Is it more likely that they would release them individually? Sure, but I mean, if ever a two pack made sense, I mean, to be just quite honest with you, if ever a pair made sense, I mean, C three PO and R two are a pair. It just makes sense to me. Um, I think that this is a possibility for sure. Let's go back to. Sixscalecantina.com and see what else is shaking within the biggest mover section. So you have uh, Obi Wan from A New Hope, Ben trending up, R2 trending up, Grand Moff Tarkin trending up, Luke Jedi Master, that version trending down, Kylo the Last Jedi, forget about it. It's just, it's sinking. And with the Rise of Skywalker version available, that for the, for the time being is the figure that collectors are choosing to go with if they're looking for a Kylo Ren, which is why you're seeing this. We've talked about <clears throat> Leia Bespin and the uh, Leia Endor. Um, they are both trending up within the secondary market. <clears throat> and we're going to talk about Leia and Wicked in a second, which is a two-pack that is trending up. And the Leia and Wicked is a two-pack that makes sense. But again, I just feel like C-3PO and R2-D2 make even more sense. They actually have a two-pack of BB-9E and um, BB-8. And <clears throat> I think the C-3PO and R2-D2 still makes more sense than that two-pack. It makes a lot of sense to me. That would be an alter, especially if they could give us a display base and have some cool stuff with, their, with those two. I'd be all over that, baby. Heavy Infantry Mandalorian. You know, I've mentioned it before. Uh, with this particular figure, it is really, really gaining traction and really starting to trend super high within the secondary market. This is an absolutely stunning uh, work of art by Hot Toys. It, it, it's, it, it calls for me to have some off-world Jawa egg juice, baby. Mmm. And this figure will breach the $400 tier range. It's really, really close to doing so. It's around $380. And you're going to be seeing it here, if not weeks, certainly within a few months that this figure is going to. Probably um, with the excitement of the Book of Boba Fett and Star Wars, this figure is going to hit it over sometime around the holidays or, or shortly afterwards. It is right there um, right now. And going back to... The biggest mover section. You know, Boba Fett 40th continues to trend super high. Darth Vader ESB 40th continues to trend up super high. Again, all reissues. <laughs> Darth Vader Rogue One gaining a lot of traction. We talked about that last week. I already spoke about Leia Endor. <clears throat> the First Order, uh, you know, uh, you, you're looking at the difference here. You got the Jetta Stormtroopers, which are really trending high. And then you got the First Order Stormtroopers, which is the complete opposite which are trending down. <clears throat> and really, uh, scrolling down a little bit over here to show you a difference of even another one, you got the Sith Trooper trending down from the, uh, from the Rise of Skywalker, the sequels. And, you know, <clears throat> pulling up some recent data on some of those other ones, you can see here the Sith Trooper. And this has been showing signs for a little bit. It was steady for a while. You know, you can go back here from September 29th and two hundred and twenty-eight dollars and fifty-nine cents with five bids, and not including the thirteen dollars and fifty-five cents in shipping, not including taxes. 
I'm pulling up something else. <clears throat> I'm pulling up another Sith Trooper. And this one, just back from November 4th, 29 bids, $193. And much higher feedback. My goodness, almost 30,000. 99.9% .9 positive. Wow. $193. Not including the $31.40 in shipping. It's a hot toy, folks. Yep, it's trending down. It is trending down. And showing the signs for a while. Unlike Dark Side Anakin now, which was showing signs for a while of trending down, was trending down, now it's showing signs of coming up. And you can look back at the end of September. With 13 bids, $626, outstanding seller, 451 feedback, not including the $12.75 in shipping, not including taxes. And then going to another one here. See Dark Side Anakin, just back from October 24th with 28 bids, $710. And 100% <clears throat> positive feedback. Not including the $31.40 in shipping. Not including taxes. And Dark Side Anakin is on the move. <clears throat> and I'm going to show that Leia Wicked, which you saw on the bottom over there. And that one's been showing signs. I've been telling you for a while of trending up over retail. And you can see right here, just back from October 31st on Halloween, with 19 bits, $475 with free shipping, 100% positive feedback, 686. And really, when you go to the market value chart, and <clears throat> this time we'll go ahead and type some of these in. And <clears throat> we'll go ahead and put in Sith Trooper in that little search box. And you can see right here, the Sith Trooper pops up, MMS 544, now $218 and trending down. Wow. Let's put in Leia, and the Leia and Wicked 2-pack will pop up. And you can see right at the top, Leia and Wicked, MMS 551, now $448 and rising. Wow. So that's going over retail, almost at the $450 tier range. And you have Luke, uh, Leia Endor at $305 and rising, and Leia Bespin at $308 and rising, which is crazy. And let's actually now <clears throat> sort this out best selling wise. And when you do, we'll be able to get Dark Side Anakin really quick. And you can see Dark Side Anakin on the move. $681 and trending up. And really, you know, when this figure was trending down, I, I really didn't think that <clears throat> it would be a very, very long time um, until it trended up again. And is it possible that this is going to once again breach the $700 tier range? We're going to have to keep an eye on it. I really think it will. But I really, really, really strongly think we are going to get that figure again. I don't think it'll be a direct reissue. It certainly won't come with the base, which won't make it a direct reissue. But I think we're going to get that figure again in one way, shape, or form. We're going to have to keep an eye on it. A two-pack would be something that I think that they could do as well with that particular figure. It would make sense. And for how high it is, it already had its little downtrend. And now it's trending up. And you got the Clone Wars one coming up. And you got the whole Obi-Wan series coming up with Hayden Christensen signed let alone signed to Disney in general. He's going to be on uh, something with the Ahsoka series and who knows what else. Very, very interesting indeed for sure. And <clears throat> going to some of the other ones on there, 
how's this guy doing? Well, I report on it any week, and I've showed you countless amounts of data. Let's get some Jawa, off-world Jawa egg juice, which kind of matches the 212 color, his color. Mmm. Yeah, baby. Um, continuing the rise. This figure, without a doubt, is going to be a, a $500 tier range figure. This figure continues to trend up within the secondary market. Um, and including this figure right here. This Ray and Dio figure. <clears throat> and this set, wow. I mean, it just continually rises. I've seen you so much, shown you so much data on those. It's very, very interesting, indeed, for sure. <clears throat> and, <clears throat> you know, with those figures, you're, you're seeing a trend. You know, they came out <clears throat> with Captain Vaughn. They came out with Clone Trooper Jesse. And basically, you know, with Jesse, they... They reused the head sculpt that they've been reusing for Tamora Morrison. With the armor on both the clones, they're reusing pieces, molds, different paint applications, so on and so forth. It's easy money, guys. It's easy money, girls. It's easy money. And <clears throat> I've told you before that you're going to see in this post-COVID environment, you're going to see production turn more towards more figures that are going to be coming out and less volume. And if they can go ahead like that Venom, or they can go ahead like that Lando Calrissian, or they can go ahead like any numerous amount of figures, again, bringing up the whole Dr. Pepper and cream soda thing, if they can go ahead and sell a few thousand of these, several thousand, if someone's going to buy it, they're going to make it. And that's what, you know, how, how is Rex doing? How are those, how are the Clone Wars figures doing? Well, they're doing enough where they wanted to come out with them again. You know, bring this figure up over here. And I love to bring this up because I know I'm 1,000% right on this. You're going to get a dark side ray with this. Because they can easily reuse this head sculpt. And then... You got your black robes and a double-bladed lightsaber, and voila. And then you might not buy it, and this one over here might not buy it, and that one over here won't buy it, but several thousand people will buy it as evidence of how quickly this figure sold out. And what it's doing within the secondary market. So you have to look at things like that. You know... <clears throat> They reused the Attack of the Clones Yoda by coming out with the same figure again and, and, and reissuing it because they knew they would make money off it, which they did. And that figure again now is actually higher than where it was trending before it was first released, which is odd, isn't it? Not really. There's more collectors in here. It's Star Wars is getting hotter. And it doesn't have the dark clouds all over Star Wars. And I think Hot Toys calculated that, too. You know, that's, that's why the Emperor sat in stock for as long as it did. That's why the Dark Side Anakin sat in stock for as long as it did. Those type of figures ain't going to sit in stock like that now. So you have to see what, what they did, you know, in the past to be able to um, <clears throat> calculate this. You know, that's why I was bringing up this figure before. They don't have to do anything with this head sculpt. This is, in my opinion, one of the greatest head sculpts they've done in all time. In anything I've seen. They're not going to rework anything. You don't think that they're going to redo the... You don't think with this price right now, and you got an Obi-Wan series, that is forthcoming? And this can just be almost like a... Uh, I don't hate to say it this way, but for the way they, they're probably like a vintage color of Boba Fett. It'd be like a novelty piece. Oh, wow, this was the original Obi-Wan. Let me buy that while I buy all the new figures. Did... Buying this figure is not going to deter you from buying any Ewan McGregor stuff, because this isn't Ewan McGregor. <laughs> and there'll be interest. 
because of the Obi-Wan series, the name Obi-Wan. And there'll be interest because it's almost $600 in the secondary market. Put it together, folks. <clears throat> yeah, very, very interesting. Indeed. And <clears throat> staying on this topic now as we move to, obviously, a new segment of this particular market chart show, I'm going to go over to sideshow.com and sort everything out best-selling wise and <clears throat> just for Star Wars and best-selling so I'm gonna pull that up onto the screen and let's dive into some stuff here that ties into what I was just saying so <clears throat> very very interestingly look at what <laughs> the number Look at what number one and two is when you sort this out, best-selling-wise. You've got Clone Trooper Jess and Captain Vaughn. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I better have some wizard juice. Right above Rex. <laughs> Right above the 501st, right above the other 501st, you know it's very interesting here, let me pause and actually remove it, and let me sort this out, all figures, okay, not just Star Wars on Hot Toys, on Sideshow, and would you look at that, even ahead of Marvel, ahead of Captain America, ahead of Sylvie, ahead of Loki. You've got Clone Trooper Jess. Yes, the head sculpt matters. Clone Trooper Jess. It's ahead of the captain, Captain Vaughn. But look at that. Your top eight Hot Toy figures. Take a look at this. Top eight. With everything sorted out. DC, Marvel, Back to the Future, whatever. <laughs> More than half of them are clones. <laughs> I mean, look at this. More than half of them are clones. And two of them are using the same head sculpt. Remember how high the Ray and Dio was before it went on wait list, by the way. Remember? Remember that? Dark side rays coming. Anyway, staying on track here. Point is, they're going to reuse these head sculpts until you don't buy them. <clears throat> wow. Just look at that. You can scroll down to the next line. What do you got? You got a Mandalorian figure and you got another clone figure, the Coruscant card. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> and would you look at where Lando Calrissian is? No one's interested in this figure. Right. It's ahead of the best car Mandalorian. It's look how high up Lando Calrissian is sorted out everything. My goodness, still that high. Ahead of Ahsoka Tano. Both of them. Lando. Not a main character in the original trilogy. Are you kidding me? He's one of the main four from Empire Strikes Back. And on from To Return of the Jedi. Mark Hamill, Harrison Ford, Carrie Fisher, Billy D. Williams. Let's go back to sort this out. Just Star Wars. And look at Lando Calrissian. Wow. <clears throat> was number five bestseller for few weeks here until Vaughn and Jesse came and still holding strong. Now, are you kidding me? Wow. Wow. And look, all this stuff is really catapulted to Coruscant Car as well. You see where the Coruscant Car is? It moved up quite a bit. Look at all these clones. It's Attack of the Clones. Let me spill some coffee, baby. Right there. Wow. Wow. 
Wow. Wait till that Ahsoka comes out. Goodness gracious. So this is very interesting, isn't it? So unless these figures here, these people like who's who's Jess, who's Jesse, who's Vaughn, who's Top, who's Wolf, but but but, but who are these people? No, nope. it doesn't matter who they are. They sell. <laughs> so until until these figures. <clears throat> Uh, are winding up where the Blurg is. All the way down here in the Jet Trooper. Way down. On here. Then you can make an argument they're not going to go ahead and reuse Tamora Boris and Head Sculpts. And they're not going to reuse any of these clone molds. You, you talk about getting, you know, we have a Mustard Trooper. A Ketchup Trooper. A Mayonnaise Trooper. A Ranch Dressing Trooper. Blue Cheese Trooper. Porcelain Trooper. Bronze Trooper, all these troopers from the OT. You haven't seen nothing yet when it comes to these clothes, baby. <laughs> you haven't seen nothing yet. <clears throat> They're going to come out with all the bad batch figures. All of them. Remember, I already had a call. I'm waiting for the call from the Hot Toys Wizard. I had a call from the Hot Toys Wizard. Go back. I had several calls. From the Hot Toys Wizard. When he was saying that they're going to come out with all of these clones. And when the Hot Toys Hot Toys Wizard, when she said, because you know, sometimes it could be a it, it could be a he, it could be a she. Hot Toys Wizard, could, it's a changeling. It can morph into anything. Remember he made that bold call. They're going to come out with all five of the Bad Batch. No, no, no way they're going to do that. I don't care if they cancel the series tomorrow. They're going to come out with them because who's who's Vaughn? <laughs> There's, oh, who's Vaughn? What is this? Okay. Well, it's selling. They can cancel the Bad Batch. They're going to come out with Wrecker. They're going to come out with Crosshair. They're going to come out with all these figures, guys. Gals. Mm -mm -mm. Very, very interesting. And and these and that's easy money for them. Yeah. It's a tack of the clothes, baby. All right. So let's get into the last segment of this episode, which is going to be, is it possible? And I'm either going to say, and I say yes, or and I say no. You got your coffee ready? All right. Here we go. Is it possible? And I say, yes. Remember, remember, boys and girls, this is the most iconic villain in all of cinematic history. And is it possible if you did a poll around the whole world and asked who's Tony Stark and Iron Man and who is Darth Vader, that more people are going to know who Darth Vader is? And I say, yes. It's not a question of which one I like better or who's better. It's not about that or who's stronger or who'd win in a fight. Forget all that. What I'm trying to tell you is there are 25, 25 Iron Mans that are up on pre-order or in stock. At Sideshow from Hot Toys. And I'm pulling them up on the screen. Here they are, baby. And you know how many Darth Vaders you have up? Zero. Zero. But they're going to come out with one. In the Kenobi series. Well, no kidding. They're going to come out with the most iconic one from Return of the Jedi and that ending scene as well. But they're going to compete against themselves. And what the heck are they doing here? <laughs> well, that's Iron Man. Well, that's Darth Vader. And I'm a Darth Vader fan. 
And let me tell you something, baby. I gotta have them all. All of them. For sure. Come on. Come on. Is it possible? And I say, yes. But Aries, nobody knows who this is. Okay. It's a good point. A lot of people aren't going to know who this is. <laughs> no one knows who, who uh, no one knows who uh, Jesse and Vaughn are, are, are too. <laughs> Who's Jesse and Vaughn? I don't know. I don't know who they are. But they're number one and number two, baby. So, <laughs> here they are. <clears throat> number one, number two. You give me a Sith Lord? A Sith Lord, like, like, look. They know how popular Revan is. Are you kidding me? That's why Black Series has come out with the, the reissues of him and they have the Jedi version as well. Are you kidding me? This is an absolute no-brainer to come out with Darth Revan. And you might not know who he is, but it doesn't matter because they don't need to sell as many of these as the best car Mandalorian or some Iron Man's. That's not what it's about. More figures, less production. Okay, here's your Dr. Pepper and cream soda. There's going to be some people who are going to like it and some people who are going to buy it. But it's not Dr. Pepper. That's okay. Not every figure needs to be Dr. Pepper. <sighs> Is it possible? And I say yes. The question is, is it going to be with this head sculpt, a new head sculpt, or is it going to be with the head sculpt they use at the Snow Speeder Pilot Luke? We're going to have to see. I don't have the answer to that. <clears throat> but regardless of which way they go, and they will go one way or the other because that figure is coming, the real question is, <clears throat> is this possible? And I say, yes. Because if you're going to go ahead and reuse the Luke head sculpt for the Snow Speeder pilot, and then you're going to go ahead and reuse that head sculpt for the um, Bespin Luke, you might as well go ahead and, and do one for the Hoth Luke. And certainly if they redo the head sculpt for the Bespin Luke, they're not just going to go ahead and put it on the shelf and wait for reissues. There's another figure that they can make out of that. And that is Hoth Luke. For sure. You can have him with this. You can have the headpiece. You can have two head sculpts. You can have this with the headpiece on. You can have him after. Who do You can have it any way that you want it. <clears throat> Cannot wait. Cannot wait. Is it possible? And I say, yes. Come on. Goodness, unlike Harrison Ford, he actually wants to come into Star Wars. <laughs> Sam Jackson. <laughs> Harrison didn't want to come in. Or maybe he was, you know, maybe that was part of, you know, you know, he is a smuggler, you know. And he seemed to come in for, for $40 million. He came in inside a couple, a uh, few hot toys, too, while he's at it. You know, hey, you know, I, you can imagine quite a bit, Harrison. So, <laughs> this is absolutely coming. Oh, but Aries, they're going to come out with one. It'll be, it'll be too many. Okay, well, there's three, there's three Captain Marvels. This is not too many Mace Windus. Are you kidding me? This is an iconic, iconic legacy character. And I want the prequels version, and many collectors want the prequels version. But Ares, they won't sell that many. They'll sell them. They'll certainly sell as many of him as they have. They did Qui Gon or, or the Heavy Infantry Mandalorian. They will, or the Mud Tripper. It's money. 
but this will compete against the other one. No, it won't. The other one is different. The other one's going to have scarring and electric stuff and has to do with the... This is the prequels. you got to have them both. <clears throat> I only want one. Well, pick one. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Is it possible? And I say, absolutely. You're talking about reusing Tamora Morrison head sculpts, using Luke's head sculpt. They've already reused this head sculpt three times. Bespin Leia. Endor Leia. Hoth Leia. Here's your Bespin Escape Leia. Coming soon to a pre-order near you. Is it possible? And I say, yes. <clears throat> Grief, Car Grief Carga, played by Carl Weathers, is coming, baby. Is it possible this could be one of the figures that come out of left field? Like, they didn't tease it at Sideshow Con or New York Comic Con? It, it could be. Just like Jesse and Vaughn, it could be. Because they're absolutely going to do this figure. <clears throat> and I actually think they're going to come out with a Mandalorian version of this figure. <clears throat> and I know he's going to be in other series and other things, but I really do. Is it possible? And I say yes. <clears throat> Absolutely. Absolutely. And I say yes. However, with this one, to be honest with you, I mean, uh, these are pretty good head sculpts that they already have. You know the one with the the one on the 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 stormtrooper disguise is is pretty pretty amazing, and already approved by Harrison Ford, obviously. And um, this one's outstanding as well. And um, you know it'd probably be a lot easier to go ahead and. get Harrison Ford to <clears throat> sign off on a new figure if it's a head sculpt that was already approved and, you know, it's not a brand new mold. You're not starting the R&D from the beginning. That's always usually how production goes anyway. Getting approvals are much, much easier when you already are just making very, very minor tweaks, if any at all. So that would be my call and the direction that I think that they're going to go. And certainly, you know, them coming out with a Bespin Han or an Endor Han or an Endor Han and Chewbacca 2-pack or a Hoth Luke, uh, you know, or, or a Hoth Han to go with the Hoth Luke, certainly. And I would venture towards the side of staying with the same head sculpt to make it easier, which I would be fine with, either one of those. Um. You know, and they could even give you a figure where it comes with, 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 with two head sculpts, and you've got the smirking version and that version, and kind of like you got with Luke. We have the Endor Deluxe. That would be cool. You can kind of look a different direction from the other ones. And so I think there's a lot that there can do. I mean, am I ruling out that they want to have a brand new Harrison head sculpt? No, I'm not ruling it out. You know, uh, I'm not ruling that out at all. But <clears throat> I think that that's a safe bet they're going to come out with them again. Okay, so the last one, the last one that I'm going to put up and that will conclude the show. Is it possible? And I say, hold on, I'm getting a call from the Hot Toys Wizard. Wizard, you sound like, you sound like Robert Downey Jr. No, it, you're Iron Man. Right. Right. Yes. 
I know that there's 25 of you on pre-order and, and, and in stock. Yes. Yes, it's quite fascinating, actually. Mm hmm Really? Are you sure? Well, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Of course I've looked better. Bye. <laughs> well, I'm quite beside myself. Because is it possible that we're going to get a C-3PO and also an R2-D2? And the Hot Toys Wizard says, yes. But he didn't tell me or not if it was going to be a two-pack or individually. Mmm. That darn wizard. <laughs> anyway. You're for sure going to get a C-3PO. And then your Hot Toys Star Wars collection will be complete. Please let it be a two-pack, baby. That'd be great. I gotta get them both anyway. <laughs> please go ahead and hit that like button if you enjoyed the content. And please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I so very much appreciate your support. And if you liked what you watched here today, and you would like some expanded analysis and some heightened thoughts, perhaps you would like <clears throat> some fun extra content, like some crazy unboxings where they're the worst in the world, but I certainly have a good time opening up the toys. Or you want to see some conversations or perhaps a show hosted by the Hot Toys Wizard. You may want to consider joining the channel. Now, all you got to do is click on that little join button in the channel. See everything that it comes with. If you feel like you could benefit from it, you may want to consider joining. Now, if you want a preview, just go ahead and go to sixscalecantina.com. And you can scroll down, and you can see right here in this little light blue, bluish bar, like teal, on the right side, you see the Cantina Insider. You'll see some of the banners of the videos. There's only a very, very small sampling. But you got like Rex unboxing, what goes inside the chart, the wizard in person, baby, Grogu in the NWO. Future Grails, you definitely want to check it out. If you think this would be of interest to you, you may want to consider joining. Also, Cantina Mugs, baby, they're right here. All you got to do when you're at SixScaleCantina.com is click on this. There's usually a discount code where I have these available on Zazzle. Go ahead and put in that code. It'll give you a discount. It's available in the 11 ounce and 15 ounce. And it could prop... It could make a really good holiday gift for you or for that special someone that knows that you watched this crazy guy at SixScaleCantina.com. Here it is right here, baby. It's a wonderful mug. Is it possible? You have to wonder. Remember, I'll be live this Saturday with Live and Raw at 6 p.m. Eastern. You don't want to miss that, baby. And I'll also be live on Six Scale Unfiltered, Dante the Man, a hot collectible show, 8.30 p.m. Eastern, this coming Friday. Remember, many of the truths we cling to depend greatly on our own point of view. Stay thirsty, my friends.